Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn how to safeguard our system from the external threats using the concept of firewall. So we are going to learn about configuring a internal system service which is firewall D. So let us first start by learning or understanding in brief what is the use of firewall. So firewall is a kind of a protective layer. It can be hardware, it can be a software which safeguards or protects your system from external network threats. So what it does is whatever incoming traffic is there, it is going to filter that based on certain rules and then decide whether the traffic is coming from a safe source or not. If it is not from a safe source, then the whatever request is there that is going to be discarded. Further, even if it is coming from a recognized source, but is the service that that source wants to access or the port that the source wants to access, is it allowed or not? So in short, firewall is going to, it's an inbuilt system within the OS that is going to help you safeguard your system from external network threats. In Linux, we use NetFilter as the network filtering system and Firewall D is the daemon used by Red Hat to connect to that NetFilter. So what Firewall D is going to use is going to do is it's going to filter out all the incoming packets based upon the source or the network interface and then decide whether the traffic is safe for the system or not. All the applications that we use can contact or can connect to this firewall D service for opening certain ports or services. Now how firewall D works is it divides the all the incoming traffic into zones. So here is a list of the zones, the default zones that are there in the system when you will install the firewall D daemon or the firewall D package. So what it does is you can see there are lots of zones the entire traffic will be divided into one of these zones. For example, let us suppose that you are working in the office or you are working in your home. Then your zone is different. If you are in a home, then you are at a safe, safe space. But if you are at a public space, then you know that the traffic that is coming from the outside network, it might not be from legitimate sources. People might want to hack into your system. So in that scenario or in that particular zone, you might want to restrict certain services. For example, at home or at your work, it's safe if you allow people or outside traffic to access your SSH service because it might be some of your friend or your colleague or you yourself might want to use the SSH service to log into your system. But it will not be safe if you allow access to the SSH service in a public zone okay, or in a particular network which you are not sure whether it is safe or not. So what you can do is you can set up a particular zone for valid ports or services. So as you can see here some of the services will not be allowed in some particular zones whereas they are allowed in some other zones. So whatever is the incoming traffic the firewall D service or the firewall D daemon will check whether it is coming from a recognized source or not, whether that source falls into one of the zones or not. If yes, then the rules of that particular zone will be applied. If the traffic or the source does not fall into any of the zones, then it is checked whether the traffic that is coming onto a particular interface, whether that network interface is attached to one of the zones or not if not then the default zone whatever is the default zone in the system that will be picked up and the rules of that particular zone will be applied by default the default zone will be public but as an administrator you can change it to any of the zones that are available in the system now similar to the predefined zones there are certain predefined services also which are configured while we install the firewall D daemon. Now to manage these services or the zones we have two methods either we can use the command line interface which I am going to discuss in this particular lecture or you can use the graphical user interface again the 
services or the ports that you are going to access or manipulations that you can change will be same. The only thing is it's going to be very easy see, if you are going to use a graphical interface so that once you have understood the command line interface, the graphical user interface will be pretty easy for you to manage. So I'm going to focus on the command line part. So to manage the firewall D service using the command line, we need to use the firewall CMD command firewall hyphen cmd command now by default the firewall d package will be installed if it is not then you can install it using the yum package manager and as i have told you the command that you are going to use is firewall cmd so first let us discuss what are the available options with this particular command so what all things you can do is you can either list the default zone so whichever default zone the system is using you can list that using get default zone if you want to change it then you can use the set default zone command you can also see which are the active zones within the system then you can either add a new source so for example you want to add to a particular zone a particular ip address so that whatever data or whatever traffic comes from that particular IP address will be considered as legitimate or will be considered as safe. Then you can add or remove any source. You can add a service means let's suppose if SSHD is not allowed in a particular zone, you can add SSHD into that particular zone. Similarly, you can also add a port to any zone you can remove a service, you can remove a port. Remember, whatever changes you make, you must reload the firewall D package or firewall D daemon after doing all this. Now, it might seem a little complicated, but it's very easy. So, let's try out some of these options by using a particular scenario. So, suppose that the question says you need to set the default zone to XYZ means any one that is either in your system or has been specified otherwise and allow all traffic from a particular source. So 192.168.1.1 you want to allow anything from this particular IP address and this should be assigned to the internal zone. Also open the network ports for MySQL on the internal zone. So let us see what all things we have to do for this particular example. So the very first thing is I am going to set the default zone to XYZ. So firewall CMD hyphen hyphen set hyphen default hyphen zone equal to XYZ. So default zone will change. Next you need to add the source. So this time I am going to use add source. So apart from this I need to tell in which zone I am going to add this. So the zone is internal first parameter you can see is permanent so this change will be permanent if i use this particular option now once you have added the source the next thing is i want to add the service so add service mysql finally we need to reload so that whatever changes we have made are implemented so let us try this on the system to start on let's use firewall cmd Let's suppose I first list the zones. So get zones. So you can see all the zones are there. Okay. And if I list firewall CMD hyphen hyphen get default zone. So the current default zone is public. Okay. So as per the question, we need to change it to internal the very first thing that we were required to do was we were required to change the default zone so firewall cmd set default zone and the question all that was xyz so xyz is not any zone in my system let's suppose i want to change it to internal okay success now second part was i need to firewall cmd we need to add a source 
so hyphen hyphen permanent to which zone to zone internal and i need to add the source 192.168.1.1 success everything is going fine third part firewall cmd again this should be permanent to which zone internal if we don't specify the zone here then whatever we are doing will have an impact on the default zone okay so if you want to make the changes to the default zone need not to write the or specify the zone again and again then add service so this is one of the common things that you are required to do because at times we install new packages and we have to add certain services for those packages so this is something that you might encounter frequently add service which service mysql and finally we need to reload so now whatever changes we have made will be implemented and let's suppose i again use firewall cmd get double hyphen get default zone earlier it was public if you remember you can see on the screen also but now it is internal all right so the other options also you can use in the similar manner so that was all about how to manage the firewall in the next video we are going to talk about auto fs